So, yes, I just want to talk a f about a few things. One of them, uh, earlier today, was talking about, and Dr. Hawkins inspired me, and I found it to be very, very useful, is that a lot of the situations that arise um, are karmic in origins. What does karmic mean? Karmic means that some actions I did in the past uh, are coming back towards me at this point in time. Karma doesn't necessarily have to be past lives, it could be even from this lifetime. It's like, if you were to take it on a romantic point of view, it's like, it, I, I could like break up with people very severely. Um, I might have been doing that, in, and this is not true, I'm just making it up, you know. <laughs> I'm not <counting. laughs> <laughs> I'll <have a, laughs> exactly. give, a, give a sort of a, a romantic history of my <laughs> but if, Let's say I was a person who, who would like break up with people in a very cruel and horrible way. Uh, so th let's say I was doing that in the early part of my life and then now I get to meet somebody and then uh, they, they break up with me in a horrible way. Then that could be that would be that can often be a karm what I call a karmic event. It's like I behaved in that way in the past, and now I get the car you know. So I sowed bad karma, if you like, or negative karma into the world, and now I reap that karma in a similar way coming back to me. You know, if we go on to, if you subscribe to which I do, that past lives are real, then you can actually have karma karmic stuff from past lives coming. In. Come and come and you don't, you don't have to. You can even believe just from this lifetime, but it's like I guess it's like the you know the old sayings that we know in the collective: what goes round comes round. Um, as you sow, so shall you reap. That's a biblical one. So all our actions um, come back. So my, one of the prayers and um, Malkin said that a lot of you know a lot of events that are unexplained often are karmic. You know, and actually, if you go, if you take the the view which I do take, which is that past lives are real, and if you do, like I'm I'm a hypnotherapist, and in hypnotherapy we have past life regression, and um, if you go into past life regression, I mean it's irrefutable evidence. You, they can you know you can find people who who remember you can regress them in hypnosis. They go back to past life in World War One. They remember the names of everyone in the squadron. They remember the places they went to. And then they track the records down and they find it's exactly the same. In past life regression, you know, so... And it also, it'll, anyway, that's... And also kinesiology or muscle testing, which is another thing which some of you may... You can check. Because in the universe, muscle testing, kinesiology, if you, if you can do it, the muscle stays strong whenever truth is spoken. So you can find, do past lives exist? They do. So that's in alignment with, you know, what Buddha said. Uh, but you don't have to go along with that. Just karma can be from this lifetime. So the, the prayer would be like, so you just assume. What, so how would you do it around money and relationships or anything that's happening? You know, like a lot of people face relationship type problems. A lot of people uh, face financial type problems. A lot of people face health type problems. So as I was sort of saying earlier, uh, when I got my chance to go and meet Dr. Hawkins, who had, I had a lot of physical ailments and he'd let go of 23, 23 illnesses. And one of the, you know, one of the prime sources of inspiration you might say for that was at the Course in Miracles, lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles. God did not create cancer, so it is not real. Um, so you can, or, you know, so whatever it is. But you can use that with things, like God did not create bad relationships, so they're not real. God did not create people who break up with you in a rude way, so it's not real. Or God did not create a world where there's not enough jobs to go around, so it's not real. Or God did not create low self-esteem, so it is not real. Or God did not create inappropriate behavior so it's not real or God did not create whatever it is so you can you can delete those things now often the way karma you know the Course in Miracles talks about guilt um, and often uh, if I've done something 
even though I might be in an unconscious state, I could be an alcoholic or a drug addict or a food addict or what, whatever, um, even though I might be unconscious, I still pick up the karma because my spirit, you know, I pick up the guilt. Even if I was like numbed out on addiction, like stuffed with donuts, and I, you know, and I stole someone's bagels, then you know I still have the I still carry the guilt, and then I take on the karma, and then I'm going to at some point that karma will come back to me, like, you know, someone will steal my donut when I'm not looking, you see, and I go I was waiting to eat that donut, and someone's just taken it from me, so it's like, that's, that's you know, I mean. It, Karma can be more severe than losing your donuts, but but it's like it's it's the thing of that. So, well, you know, it's what goes around, what's coming. But this is the prayer. So, if something bad happens, like um, you you have to like you can pray for a miracle as well to ask God to reveal to you what's the symbolic. Like when I saw Hawkins, I had gout, you know, and there's often a message of guilt or something symbolic in all the illnesses and afflictions that come our way and the behavior that other people behave uh, towards us with. So I had gout and he had gout and he told me um, that um, pray for forgiveness for the one, he, he got rid of gout and he found out through his research that it was to pray for forgiveness for the one in me that had created pain in others. Because gout's a painful condition. And it's like I felt so guilty creating pain in others that I manifested this pain in my foot. You see, so you just pray for forgiveness. Or if it's like you fall in love with someone and then they, uh, then they dump you and they're seeing someone else or something like that, then you pray for forgiveness for the one in me who was just insensitive and treated people you know, like disposable nappies or something. So you just sort of let, let them go. So, so you see what's happening in life. If it's around money, you know, um, it can be, you know, like I used to work, I used to, yeah, I was pretty bad actually when I was working in the stock market. I was in active food addiction, other addictions. So I was uh, dishonest in the work I was doing. And so people, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't doing a competent job. So that meant people were losing money while they're working in the stock market. So, you know, so if you know, I could pray for forgiveness for the one in me who was incompetent, and meant that other people lost money when they were supposed to have trust in me. You see, so, and that that could reflect like why I'm having such a bad time with money, or why people who say I, you know, when I was a, I am still a hypnotherapist. So I was a hypnotherapist, and I'd, I'd gone through out of my spiritual awakening. And this guy booked, booked an appointment for me for st stop smoking, which I was charging, I think, £250 for a stop smoking session. So he came in and, uh, and he said, uh, it's like, I take the money up front because I'm a businessman, you know, like, can I have the money <laughs> for the session? And he goes, I'll write you a cheque. And, you know, I thought, well, oh, okay. And he said, he wrote me a business cheque. So he said, it's like, it's a business cheque, so you're definitely going to get the money. So I said, oh, well, fair, fair enough. And then obviously it was like a, it was like a dumb check, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, there he was, you know, God bless him. He was like an Asian as well, you know. Did so, you stop smoking? Fun? I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> you were helping him stop smoking? Fun? Were helping him stop yeah, I was giving a hypnotherapy oh, session okay. for stop smoking. He wrote me a check, two hundred and fifty pounds, and it was a bad check, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I just, you know, I just knew it, you know. I mean, you, can, I mean, look about you, look what your, look at your back history, you know, like someone, you know, it's, you know, what goes round comes round, you know. Like I was incompetent in the stock market; people lost money. Here, you know, now I want to, I want to be spiritual. But even though I want to be spiritual now, I still have a backlog of stuff I have to clear out. So it's not like I'm spiritual today and it's like I'm not going to have any more problems. It's like I'm going to be spiritual today, okay, now I can start paying off my backlog. You know, like God says, you're ready now to pay off, you know, pay off your debt now. So <laughs> you've accumulated enough debt, so like, like do some free hypnosis <laughs> and, <laughs> and see what it feels like to be on the other end, you know, so... So I could, you know, so then I'd, <clears throat> so I'd do the, you know, the karma prayer would be, I pray, 
So obviously I haven't do that, but you can do the prayer. I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's been financially incompetent and insensitive because of my addictions and uh, allowed other people to lose money and created suffering for others. So you can sort of track. So rather than it be like, um, so you sort of see, you, you investigate your own life and you can like intuit, like what's, what patterns are happening in my life romantically? What's happening in my life over and over again in my romantic situations? Financially, what's happening over and over again? And then you start to see if it's a good thing, usually it's because, you know, there's something a very good, a good, because if we say that the universe, we're in oneness in the universe, then what I do to others, I do to myself. It's like, if I try and take from the universe selfishly, then the universe is going to respond in the oneness, because I've been taking from our one self. So the one self is going to be a reflection of that. Or if I'm giving, if I'm in, in the, the brother, brotherhood or sisterhood of oneness, we're all one. So the more I give, the better, because it's just me. I'm just giving to me. All, everyone in this room is me. So if I can help me, that's going to be good for me. Or if I try and attack everyone here, then I'm attacking myself. So it's, it's not going to be... Actually, we are one, so we all go up together, we all go down together. We just don't realise that until you get these spiritual awakenings. So it's not... It's in my best interest. So so the, the karmic prayer... I remember, because I, I would have throat prayer, and when I would do the anti-karma, when, when you get the right anti-karma prayer, you can, you can feel release in your body. It'll feel like you're, you're releasing something. So you do it in that way. So would, um, we're going to do that today together as a group and just have a guess, you know, or what, what's the theme? Like, you know, every person I meet romantically is X. So you then realise if they're not good in a certain way, you then say, pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's behaved in X way towards others. And I always believe in past lives, like, no, usually the, the unconscious defends itself. I've never, I've been like a virtuous saint my whole life, I've never done anything wrong towards anyone. But then, you know, it could be a past life thing, you see, so you don't remember it from this lifetime. So, it does, it does, uh, uh, it does, um, uh, if you see past life karma, then it explains why people have things they can't explain from this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what, what I like about, if you, if you subscribe to the view that past lives are real, then that will explain why, well I don't remember, I don't remember being horrible to, I don't remember ripping anyone off in this lifetime, I've just been financially nice to everyone. But it could be in, you know, the last lifetime I was a crook. I mean, I've shared in these groups, like, I, I would often go to spiritual groups and I'd lose my hats and scarves regularly, and this is true, true story lose my hats and scarves uh, in, in, in spiritual groups. So I could intuit the karma, like I was a spiritual hat thief in a, in a past life. Because I, I, I know it's a consistent thing, and I remember once I went to, I went to uh, Selfridges, and I bought this beautiful hunter's cap. I really loved it, I went to a spiritual group and I lost it. And then, and then I, was, I was going, I went to Selfridges again in the sales, and I got this lovely woolen cap. And I went to a 12-step group, and I lost it. And then after that, it was like, I just go to pound them now. And I just get a cheap cap, and I go, and I lose them regularly, but I'm not going to buy any more expensive. So I haven't been bothered to pray for it. I just thought I'd just buy cheap caps from now on. But if it was, if it was a bad one, like, you know, like, like I'm getting sacked from jobs regularly, then I'd go, like, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who was an asshole boss and was insensitive or never gave people second chances or, or whatever it was, you see, so you can do it. Um, so we'll be doing that, you know, we'll be doing some others. Cancelling of beliefs. Cancelling of beliefs is very powerful. Um, you can cancel anything that's coming up, whether it's um, poor, poor sleep at night, bad relationships, feeling like a fraud. Feeling like a fraud is... Um, is very, very common. I mean, I come from an addiction background, and that's a very, very common thing. Um, always feeling like I'm going to be found out. People are going to find out, you're not really a good stockbroker. You, I mean, you shouldn't be here. We found you out. Like, you haven't got enough qualifications, and, you know, like, get out of here. How are you 
putting this act on for so long, you know, or, <laughs> you know, why are you pretending to be a normal person? You're totally nuts, you know, you should be locked up. Or, so you're always worried about people, but actually, um, often uh, it's not necessarily true, but these are all due to levels of consciousness. As you start doing the forgiveness work and start feeling out your suppressed feelings, you start to feel this sense of inner peace and calm. And then those thoughts, or you go into a higher vi spiritual vibration, those thoughts of like, you're bad, you're wrong, you're guilty, you'll be found out, they, they start to leave. Um, it's often not true. Often people who feel who are addicts or feel like frauds uh, are often really good workers. Um, I remember, you know, like when I was working in the stock market, like I was getting pay rises, but I always felt like a fraud. I was going to be found out at any time. And um, um, so you're just doing the, the main thing, you know, with the anti-karma prayer and with everything is the most important thing is to do the inner spiritual work. Um, like, uh, I know some people suffer with obsession, especially if you come from an addictive thing, or obsession or, or, or fantasy, obsession and fantasy. And again, that is like the most important thing to do is to do the spiritual work. Because remember, it's not, nothing outside of oneself can fix a vibration, you know, and actually vibrations attract. So, you know, the, the answer is never something outside of you for a fix. The answer is always like to let go of the, the thoughts and behaviors inside of yourself and to find peace on the inside. And then these things stop happening to you over and over again. Usually if you're, um, most people in society, if something goes wrong, they look for something outside to be a quick fix. Like as a, as a food addict, you know, if something was wrong in my life, I need to change my food or find a different food or comfort myself with food or try and lose weight with the diet. But that's, none of that stuff is a solution, you know, or if, if I was in, um, if my thing was like, I needed to get a girlfriend to fix myself, then it would be like, I need to get another girlfriend or a different girlfriend. But those aren't really the solution, because it's like, if you're spiritually disconnected, just getting another donut or another girlfriend won't fix it, because you'll still be the same person on the inside. So you need to spiritually let that go and go to a higher vibration. Um, and uh, anyway, we'll get started on the group counsellings of beliefs, so we can quite a big group of us today. Can I just say 